Hey, what's up people? Today I'm doing a video on Easy Drummer. Uh, this is different than past Easy Drummer videos I've done. I've done them before showing you how to make templates, how to stem out from Easy Drummer. So to go and route all the outputs here to audio tracks and all that. And I still, I, I used to work that way. Uh, and that's still a fine way to work. But as, as I've just grown with both Easy Drummer and Pro Tools and as Pro Tools itself has evolved, I've started to work a different way that I prefer, and I thought I'd make a video sharing that. So I have a client's track here that I've been helping to produce and really rewrite the MIDI drum parts before I go to mix it. So I'm at the perfect point where I'm about to get all the drums out to individual tracks, which you don't necessarily have to do, but I like to do because you can then get a lot more individualized control over the different tracks. You can compress and limit and saturate and do whatever you want uh, to individualize tracks rather than to just the whole of Easy Drummer if it's still in one track. So most people get to the point where they want to get all the tracks out in an individualized way. So I want to show you a different way that I do that that I think has some advantages to the old way of routing out all these easy drum outputs to tracks or audio tracks or auxes and also wanted to show you how I, I layer. Um, I like to do it this way now also because I like to, while I'm writing and working, I just like to have just the easy drummer track without all the, the uh, input enabled audio track returns or auxes or, or whatever that you have this whole setup. I just like to have just it all kind of in one track while I'm working, but when I'm 100% done writing the MIDI drums, which is the point where I find myself now, then I want to get them out to tracks. So <clears throat> the first thing I do is, so again, these are done, like I've gone through and sorry, one second here. gone through and spent an enormous amount of time tweaking these drums and getting them 100% done, velocities, everything. They're, they're very much finished 99% of the way. So when you get that to that point, what I like to do is to just go ahead and duplicate Shift Option D or Shift Alt D if you're on a PC, uh, duplicate Easy Drummer, with everything just checked along and go through and listen to them and pick another drum kit that sounds good on top of it so this way you can get the texture and the the kind of detail of having two kits so just go through and pick other ones that you're not using on the first one and listen to them and find two that sound good together now I've already done that so I'm gonna get rid of this new one I just wanted to show you that so here's the one that I layered with it. So I'm going to make it active. I just right click to make it active. So these two sound good together. Now when you're about to do this the way that I'm going to do it, unlike when you route these out to tracks, that gives a very direct signal. Whereas here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the commit function um, along with soloing MIDI lanes. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a second here. But, uh, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Um, when you're doing it this way, you have to make sure that it's exactly how you want it to sound. So in other words, like I don't want any of Easy Drummer's compression or reverb to come out in, in each of the individ individualized tracks. So I got to turn that off here as I've done. And then in the other track as well, I turned off the reverb, the drum compression, the uh, the mono ambience, just because I didn't want it. Now, if you want it, great. Just, just be aware that like that's going to be in each track that you kick out. <clears throat> so I've got drums one and two. And then I'm going to go through and actually, I'm going to use the same MIDI for both of these. And you'll see what I mean in a minute here. So I'm just going to delete one of them save often as you go while doing this. So now I'm going to just bring up this drum track. I just hit control equal to do that. And I'm going to command A to select all or uh, control if you're on a PC and then C 
Command or Control M to mute them, which it ignored me for some reason. Command M, there you go, now it listened. So I, I muted them all so that I can go through and one at a time unmute them all and kick them out. So like, I'm gonna click on that key there that is the bass drum, hit Command M. So now I have just the bass drum track and I'm gonna hit Shift Option C or Shift Alt C or if you're on a PC. And I'm gonna, now this is the commit window that came up I want to commit selected tracks. I don't want to render any of this stuff, although there's really nothing there. Um, insert after select, yes. Do nothing to source tracks. Offline, yes. Now this is pretty quick. Now this track itself, this is a 10 minute long epic track, so it, t it takes a couple minutes, which I'll, I'll edit out the time here that it takes, but when you're doing a normal four or five minute track, uh, it, it's pretty quick and besides like you have to doing it the old way where you route it out to tracks You have to do it in real time anyway, although I guess nowadays you might not I think there's a um, I think there's a function where you, you probably don't have to But it, nevertheless, I don't mind doing this because I get I get what I want out of it, and it's still <laughs> usually pretty quick So now I have my, so as you do this, go through and name everything. So if you want to double check, make sure it is what you want. That's not a bad idea. Listen. Good. So it's my kick. I'm going to bring up this floating fader here just by clicking on that little tiny fader icon. I want <clears throat> to click these up to the middle. So option click or alt click and link, but don't invert, right? So because my kick, I'm going to want to be dead up the middle. You could also right click and split into mono if you want. I used to do that. I used to think that had some relevance somehow, uh, but I don't really think so anymore. Uh, as long as you're folding the pan onto itself, it's if for all intents and purposes, it's, it's now mono. So I'm gonna name this kick one and then move it down out of the way. Then I'm gonna take this whole drum track that still has the kick soloed and I'm gonna go X down, which is semicolon V, just paste, just to move it down, or you could just click and drag it, however you want to get it down. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. Now I'm going to shift option C or shift alt C if you're on PC. It's going to come up the same way it was. Just hit enter and now. Oh, and now I ran out of space on the drive I'm working on. So I'll fix that, obviously. Um, but that won't happen, it'll just kick out. So after an edit, I will be back in an instant with you. And magically I'm back now on a different drive that has more space. So where we were, now is gonna go with the second drum track and kick that out same way. Shift Option C or Shift Alt C if you're on a PC. This will come up the same way, hit enter, watch it burn. All right, so then we got our second track here. I'm gonna call it kick two. Click on the little fader. Click them up to the middle. Link, don't invert. <clears throat> then on to the next one. So I'm gonna stay on the second drum track here. Control equal, bring up the MIDI window. I just did Command A to select all or Control A. Command or Control M twice. So now everybody's muted again. So right away I'm gonna come on, help if I put my headphones back on. One of the things I like better about doing it this way than routing to tracks. So here like this track has a lot of these side stick snare hits. And so we can give them to their own tracks. So I'm only gonna select those and not the rest of the snares and just export those. And that's really nice because normally once you get into the mix, a lot of the time these sides, uh, side stick snare hits are not loud enough. They're not as nearly as loud as all the big snare hits. Then you, then you have to do a crap ton of volume automation or clip gain automation, which is a pain in the butt. So I like this better. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. Shift Alt C or Shift Option C, depending on your OS, enter, watch it burn. Okay, so again, I recommend you name as you go here. So click on this one, I'd call it 
uh, stick, click, two, or whatever works for your brain. Click on the little floating fader, option click, option click, or alt, link, and then you can take this and move it on up, move it on up to the other track. Go again, shift option C, burn. So name it, stick, click one, floating fader, option click, option click, alt click, alt click, whichever link. So again, I'm just doing that because I want those elements to be mono and singular in their position in the mix. Some tracks we will not do that way and you'll see when we get there. Open it back up. Command M twice for muting to unmute everything and then remute or control. And then you just got to remember what you've done, obviously. So the last thing we did was that stick click. So now we're going to do all the snares. And usually Easy Drummer has three rows of snare that just are different sounding hits. So just make sure you get them all. And go again, shift option C. <clears throat> and you might have noticed I forgot to center my previous snare, so I'll do that now and then I'll do that to this guy as well. Option click, alt click, link, snare two. Okay, so let's keep going here. <clears throat> Control equal, bring up your menu window, command M twice. So we did snares last. Now we're onto toms. And I'm you could get as granular as you want with this. Always okay to double check. <laughs> you don't want to do this wrong and have to do it again. So you could you could kick out all your toms individually to tracks if you really want to get nuts. I don't want to get that nuts, so I'm not. Shift Option C, burn. Okay, so we got our toms. Not a ton of toms in this song, but you know, some. So here's one. Let's name it. That's toms two because it's from the second drum track, and then. This is one where I will do this differently, where I will link and invert because these will have some stereo image in the mix. So that way we can adjust them like so. So then close that out, move it up, kick it out, shift option C. So that's Tom's one, link invert, Good. move it down get back in, you can just double click with your grabber tool, get in that way. Command M twice. If that ever doesn't work for some reason, just click into your field here and then go Command A and then Command M twice. Sometimes that just glitches out. So the last thing we did was toms. Now we get in, got to get in and get all our hats. Make sure you don't miss any because there are a bunch of rows of them. There's one, Command M or Control. There's one. There's often, if you use it, there's one way up, I mean, everything repeats, but there's another real open one up toward the top I use. That one. So, and I just saved, you should save off and save as you go. You don't want to have to do all this again. Shift Option C, burn it out. Great. That's one. I'm just double clicking on the track nameplate. This is one I will center by option or alt clicking link because I want those to sit as mono. You don't have to, but I do. Well, I don't have to, I want to. So that was hats one. Drag it down. Shift option C or shift alt C, enter. So that's hats two. Double click on the nameplate. Click on the little fader, option click, alt click to center it, link, and now they're linked. OK, 
Command M twice or Control M to mute everybody again. So we did our hats last. We already did our toms. That means we're getting into symbols. Here's another spot where I like to delink things a little bit. Where normally, if you were kicking out to tracks the old way, your ride and all your other symbols would be in the same track. I find that to suck because the ride is often too quiet. And then again, you have to do lots of volume automation. Watch for that, you often have two rows of what you think of as ride, like there's a more kind of bell hit and a more uh, further out hit like that. So get both of those, shift option C or shift alt C, go. All right. So that was our ride two, oops, not ride one. That's something that I do want to be mono, so I'm going to option or alt click link. It's going to end up being over on the right because I like to do player perspective with my drum mixes. So I mean, I'll, f I'll finesse that positioning later, but just shoving it over there wherever. Drag that back up to the first track. Shift option C, shift alt C, whichever. Go. See, and now three times as fast as the other one. That's so weird. So I think we're almost there. I think we're just going to have then just... Uh, symbols for both tracks and then I'm going to show you some of the ways that I deal with grouping these that to prep for mix that's helpful too. So this was ride one, double click the nameplate, ride one, option click the pan, link it, move it, move it, save, open command M twice. Now we got to get all our symbols. So again, I'm just command Ming each row that I want, or control if you're on PC. Not the ride, right? Because we just did that. go. Shift option C. So it's going to be symbols one. Here's one where we're definitely going to want some stereo image. So I'm going to link and invert so that we can have a big wide spread there. Drag it down. Shift option C. Kick it out. All right, so at this point, you have everything. So I would take these two tracks and make them inactive. I wouldn't hide them, although I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm just in a habit of not, because if you hide them and you make any global arrangement edits, it, it won't happen to them. Um, so I usually keep them in view. So then this last one was our symbols two. Bring up the fader, link and invert, widen them out. And all that's just, you know, uh, basic. I'll get more into the details of the mix later. So now, looking at my mix window, uh, command equal or just go window mix, however you want to do it. My drums are always orange just because. So then I'm going to put together, like, I want the kicks on the left. I want the snares after that. So I'm going to click snare one, two. And I want the hats after that. Then I want, what do I want? Then I want the toms after that. And I want the rides after that. Symbols last though, and I forgot I have stick clicks here, which I don't often have. I'm gonna put them before the snares. <clears throat> so then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna group each of these, like go Command G or Control G, kick. Let's, let's check our attributes here. I want most all this stuff to be linked. If it's not, you can option or alt click to get a whole column like that. 
I usually leave pan out of it and say, okay. Cool thing now too is, so now they're linked, but if I right click and drag, they're not. That's called clutching out a group member. So left, cl left click and drag versus right click and drag. So you have a cool kind of dual functionality there. So you go through and do that with all these group, call that, uh, rim shot seems loud. So I'll call it side stick stock. Then command G, control G, snare. Once you check the attributes, once you can see they're all, that's what the globals were. So they're all just doing that. Command G, control G if you're PC, hats. Command G, toms, command G, rides, command G, symbols. I know that I'm going to end up doing a parallel compression aux for drums. So I'm going to throw that in here, just the basics of it, because I want to include that in a big group I'm going to make in a minute. So then I'm also going to make a drums all group. I'm going to make sure you turn that one off. Then I'm going to make a VCA for that. Shift command N, command down, substitute control if you're, oh, I missed it. On a PC, make a VCA master. I'm going to call this drums all. Go up here to the where the output would be and assign the drums all group to it. I make my VCAs red. So now I have a global handle for all these drums that I can solo them all. And now it's not mixed at all at this point because it's just, just raw what I kicked out. So from this point, then you're going to go in and mix it, which I might do. Uh, I might do another video where I start get digging into that. But for now, I just really wanted to show the process of how I get set up to get to that point. So that was it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I really like working this way.